What's going on guys? So as promised, we are gonna get to the bottom of how RV frames are designed and made. And I think one of the best starting points is this Lippert beam processing facility. So this is where the beams get processed before they get turned into frames. This is a very, very interesting building. We're gonna meet some interesting people inside and this is gonna answer a lot of questions people have. Let's talk about it. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm doing absolutely outstanding. And yes, they knew I was coming here. I just didn't <laughs> randomly walk through a door and a bunch of people in hard hats were waiting for me. So we are at the Lippert Beam Processing Facility, or plant, yep. one of the two. So this is the place that the steel, the raw steel, I would imagine the I-beams come in first, get processed and prepped before they get sent out to a frame factory and turned into frames. Am I almost on the right page there? Okay, so we're surrounded by a lot of people right here. Let's start from the left and work our way to the right. If you could introduce yourself, please. I'm Matt, Matt Moreland, Vice President of the Chassis Division here at Lippert. Okay. Uh, I've been here for 17 years and uh, most of that in the Chassis Division. Okay, great. How you doing? My name is Steve Slokey, the Regional Operations Manager here in the Chassis Division. Been here for 20 years, all in the Chassis Division. Okay. Hi there, my name is Mark Keston. I'm the Director of Engineering for Chassis Products. I've been here two and a half years, 25 years in automotive prior to that. I'm going to come back to you in a second. Fantastic. Uh, Richard Della Santos, I'm the Engineering Manager for the Beam Processing Center. I've been here about six years. Okay. I'm Jared Lippert. I'm the uh, Chief Marketing Officer here, kind of born into the company, obviously, but uh, uh, technically working here for 22 years. So your your jacket isn't just the brand; it's yes. also like an, it's wear, also your name badge. I like to wear my last name. Yeah. <laughs> on my clothes, you know, I got, you know, and on the hard hat. I love these hard hats, by the way. I like to remind people who I am. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to ask. I'm going to focus right here because both of you said you were engineers, yes. and I think that this is an important part that people often want to know whenever they're looking at a product like this. Is it really engineered? Do you have real engineers that are working on it? And this question is actually asked, and to me it's almost, it's a ridiculous question because the size of Lippert would just in itself make sense that you would probably have dozens and dozens and dozens of engineers and constantly hiring more engineers in an organization. But could you quickly kind of go over the engineering side of the house and how, how many engineers you might have, what their roles are, and just the responsibilities of an engineer at Lippert? So yeah, our engineering team right now is around 30 people. We're looking to uh, expand that. I've got both a bachelor's and a master's in mechanical engineering. Um, and you know, our team goes through and um, evaluates the designs, make sure we've got structure there according to our structural guidelines. We've got uh, a lot of testing and stuff, which we'll get to later as well. Um, so CAD design, you know, working through um, testing, uh, whether that's component level durability testing, proving grounds testing, um, all those sorts of things we're involved with, um, going out and building prototypes at our customer, you know, working those through all the way through the process. Okay. And if somebody wanted to become an engineer at Lippert, what are your minimum requirements? Uh, so we're looking for an engineering degree, um, you know, a couple years of experience, but we're happy to train people as well. Um, you know, and there's people with, with different experience. So we've got also some team members focused uh, specifically on manufacturing side of things, making parts uh, higher quality, right, making it easier for our team members to do their jobs, also improve safety. Okay, and how long have you been at the company? About two and a half years. Okay, and how long have you been with the company? Six, six seven okay. years. So over the period of six, seven, two and a half, I mean, you said 17 years, 20, 20 years, yeah. and you were 17 years, right, yeah. right? You have a lot of tenure here, a lot of experience. The purpose of this facility now, I'm going to go to Jared and let him explain, kind of speaks to itself because this building is a relatively new yeah. building, right? Yep. Um, 2000 and... I think we officially like uh, started, started operating here in 2020. 2020. So great time to start, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so... This, this building that we're going to take a tour through here right now is, is uh, the single largest capital expenditure that Lippert ever made um, in any, in a, you know, we'll go over how big we are, 140 plants, you know, 12,500 people. Um, this, this here is kind of the crown jewel of, of manufacturing uh, and investment that we've made uh, just to, uh, you know, we'll go over why we did this, but, you know, 
improving manufacturing processes, improving uh, safety and quality, which you know we'll talk later about our the five pillars that Lippert's built on safety and, and quality are, are both those. Just making sure that our uh, our team members, some of the hardest jobs, like what Matt said, uh, physically demanding jobs, are uh, are safer done and, and easier done, and that's you're going to see that here at the at the Beam Processing Center. Okay, and you know when you think of engineering, you always think of constantly improving, constantly evolving, constantly looking at the processes that are in place and making them better. And I think that that's kind of a testament to what this building was designed for, right? It was to take a product that you guys have essentially mastered over the last who knows how many decades and make it easier, safer, and better. That's what I would imagine. And I think that's the goal of any large manufacturer. They want to figure a way to make the process easier, better, and safer. And I mean, think of the first assembly line, right? When, when Ford vehicles were rolling down it, the whole point was to make the process easier, better, and safer. And I think that's what we're going to see here um, in samples as we go through this facility. So let's kick it off. Anybody want to make a final comment statement before we, we start I, I the tour? Would, sure. I mean, when you say, when you talk about longevity, we our first frame, which wasn't an RV frame, was a manufactured housing frame, rolled off. Uh, a production line in uh, the middle of uh, Michigan in 1958. So to give you an idea, like we've been building frames for a long time. So that's of course evolved in, to, for manufactured housing to RVs. But um, yeah, we, we build a few frames in our in our in our long history. So it dates back to 1958. Yep. And full disclaimer: nobody here has asked me to censor anything that I ask. So. Any questions that I ask, they could be off-the-cuff questions, they could be random questions as I see something. I'm going to ask them, and I hope that nobody gets offended if I ask a question that might be a little weird. But one thing that I do want to ask is, you know, as, as you bring engineers on, I always like to say a funny joke about engineering is, is if you fill a room full of engineers and you ask who's the smartest person in the room, everyone's going to raise their hand, right? <laughs> That's just the mentality of engineers in a way because... It's, 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 it's just statistical distribution. Oh, exactly. <laughs> and that is a great answer. So, so the question I have is, you guys have been doing this for a long time. Even if you've been with the company for two years or you've been with the company for seven or 20 years, you've seen process changes. You've seen things happen. And a lot of times when you work in an engineering field, a new engineer might come in and they say, why do you do it that way? I think there's a better way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that sometimes is without any legacy experience or tribal knowledge into why you've been doing it a certain way, people come in and think they can just automatically do it better. I, you know that armchair quarterback, the people who will watch this video and be like, you know, I've been an engineer in the aeronautical industry for the past 15 years. They should be doing it this way. Or I'm a welder and I've been working in the oil field industry and this is how we do it in the oil field industry. Do you get engineers that sometimes come in here with that expectation that it should be done a certain way, but then you have to kind of educate them on why you do it the way that you do it. I mean, I think it's always healthy to question the assumptions, right? Things change over time, technology changes over time. So sometimes that's actually very healthy to get those questions. Um, and we do, we go back and we evaluate things and we make changes all the time. And yeah, sometimes there's an education that needs to be uh, mm -hmm. had. And uh, you know, usually people will come around and see that, yeah, this, we do things for a reason. And uh, you know it makes good sense at the end of the day. Yeah. And I think I'm sorry, sorry. the facility is fairly intricate, and so one of the things that we do um, think about that is making sure they have context for what we're trying to do. Because you're absolutely right. People look and go, "Well, I have a better idea." Great. What's your idea? Then how does it apply to what we're trying to do? And a lot of times, it quickly evolves to where they understand, and then we do make improvements. Mm -hmm. Because, like you're saying, sometimes you can kind of set in your ways, or you don't know something new, or someone has experience. So absorbing that, and every day our goal is to improve it. Mm -hmm. So if we can get some good ideas, some new ideas, some different idea, I, I think that's an awesome thing. Yep. And Jared had told me already that the focus of what you're doing is to build the safest possible product, but to also do it in the most efficient possible way. Is that probably the best way of saying it? Correct. Yep. The last thing we want to do is spend just gobs and gobs, millions and millions of dollars on warranty on the, on, on the after, after, yep. after sale, right? <laughs> that's just the last thing we want to do. We want to make it right the first time make the safest, best product. 
and yep. brought it possible. And that's also why you have field technicians that can go out and make changes and do fixes if there are fixes that are needed and, and focus on customer service. So, yep. again, I'm not trying to be an advocate for Lippert here. That is not the goal. The goal here is just to give people a better understanding that this isn't a mom-and-pop company. This isn't a company with, you know, one engineer who wears 55 different hats to do everything. You have specific engineers that have specific tasks, and their tasks are to ensure that the product you're building meet the specifications that your customers need, but also the safety specifications to keep them stable and functioning when they're going down the road, right? Yes. And every day we're reevaluating our process and improving it. And that's why I just came away from my desk is how to improve our process. So every day we evaluate it, check it, and try to make it better and better until uh, we get to the maximum we evolve it then beyond that. Absolutely. So I appreciate that. So this has been a pretty long video, but I think it was needed because this builds this sets the stage for what we're going to see, that there's actually engineering, there's design, there's experience and tenure that goes into what you do and the product that you put out there. And again, it's that 50-50 marriage, right? The RV manufacturer who builds the box has to understand how they need to construct that part of it for it to work well with your chassis so they both work well together, right? Okay, so we're going to kick this video off. This is actually going to be the first video. So. I know we're already kind of long. I don't want to try to make this video too long. The next video is actually us doing the facility tour. So again, this is an important video to watch because this is going to be for all those folks who say, uh, does Lippert actually employ engineers? Yeah, you employ quite a few of them, and I imagine you're hiring a lot more. So if you're looking for an engineering job and you have an engineering degree, right, this, is, this might be the place you can go. And you know what? If you are currently an unemployed person with a mechanical engineering background, and you question how things are built, maybe you need to go work for Lippert so you can actually see how things are really built, right? All right, so we're gonna end this video, guys. If you haven't had a chance, now is a perfect time. Hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and uh, we're gonna kick this tour off in the next video.